Welcome to In Our Mom's Basement Video Game Podcast, where we talk about everything video games with your host, Dan Giofue and Rage Quit Pat. What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode 57 of In Our Mom's Basement. This episode is going to be a fun episode. It is going to be a three-parter, and we're going to be discussing this generation of consoles. And of course, I'm joined with Rage Quit Pat and... You guys know him by No Show Barbosa, Argonaut Rises. What's going on, guys? What's going on, man? It's good to be back. Uh, this is going to be a very, very interesting episode. As uh, Dan the Pizza Man said, uh, there's an introduction for him. Uh, it's a three-parter, three hours. So we're going to be talking about the eighth generation of consoles. So this should be very exciting. I'm very yeah. excited to talk about this as the console generation's winding down. we got PS5 and Series X on the horizon. Um, so this is going to be a very interesting topic. Yep, but of course, before we start, i got to throw out those social medias. Uh, Twitter, at uh, IOMB5. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Intermon's Basement. And pretty much every podcast platform at Intermon's Basement. Of course, our website at Intermon's Basement. And one last thing before we get started, we are actually doing a audio listen giveaway. For, this is our third year anniversary so we want to give back give a little something special back to you guys and uh, thank you guys for all the support out there uh, you guys could join that at innermomsbasement.com slash giveaway and uh, join it up alright what are we doing first right part one Xbox right yep part one is going to be Xbox one we're going to kind of give a review here talk about um, what we thought of Xbox this generation of course games and the console itself so uh let us begin here so we're going to highlight xbox one but before we talk about the actual launch with the games let's talk about the disaster beforehand um with uh don matrix with the drm issues and um the price point and of course a lot of the media heavy so let's talk about that what did we originally think about what the xbox features were which were 24 7 you have to log on um at least once a day, I believe it was, from what I remember. Uh, I also yeah. remember. I remember as well that there was going to be like some restrictions with like used games and borrowing games. There See, was like that... you you got a physical copy, but then you installed the game, and then the CD became useless. Like some weird stuff like that. And I was just like, okay, um, yeah, so it's technically you know not a, a CD game. It's literally <laughs> yeah. a digital game. Yeah, and it was weird. Then it came, then I believe there was like this family feature you could have you could share the game with only these ten family members, yeah, which was good. No, you can go ahead. I'm just saying. Oh. Yeah, they definitely did that just so to try to make it seem like hey, you know, you can trade in games and share games with other people, like you said. But it was a yeah. And I, I guess another yeah, thing was with it... the launch is they also made you have a connect. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a, a mandatory feature. Oh my god! So that, so yep, that we're gonna talk about that with the price point. So it came out at four ninety nine, and as Dan the Pizza Man said, we every single system came with the Connect Two, and we didn't even ask for that. I don't think really any of us asked for the Connect One, to be honest with you. Never but, even used it. Yeah, I had it, and it was a you know, it was became useless after like a month, but it came with a Connect Two. The turn on feature was good, okay? I, I, I'm <laughs> but, not gonna lie, I used it a lot. Like, to turn I think, you know what? I'm not gonna lie, I did too, and I always used to try to yell, Xbox, turn off on, on people and make them turn it off mid game. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, like, the, the voice features were cool, because I used the Connect for, like, Mass Effect 3 when it had that feature where you could talk into it and stuff like that. Like, that stuff was convenient, like, Xbox, turn on, Xbox, turn off, like, things like and that. Xbox, turn on TV. Was, yeah, was some good, some good features. Yeah, like the voice features was cool, but as far as the games went, the games were a complete pile of crap. I don't, I think I maybe tried one Connect game, and I, I couldn't remember what it was with the Connect Two. Yeah, we're essential. talking about. They, they, they stopped supporting it like what a year later, maybe a year yeah, and a half. They, two I years? stopped it. And, yeah, yeah. yeah they it kind was... of just like cleaned their hands. They're like, hey, uh, we're done. Uh, that's uh, your voice commanding machine from now on. Yeah, and then basically. It was that's the reason why the price point was at four ninety nine. They were like, well, it's five hundred because it comes with the connect, which most people, most casual gamers aren't going to use it, you know. But um, any that's the launch. Obviously, all the 
things happened. And then, of course, uh, Sony forced Microsoft's hand at E3 when Sony, and we'll talk about Sony as well in hour two, yeah. but um, Sony forced their hand by saying you could play used games, you don't have to log on all the time. And also, Dom Matrix made that comment, well, if people don't want to do these features in Xbox One, that's why we have Xbox 360. So, you know, of course, he made that unfortunate comment, which also pissed people off, but nevertheless um xbox retracted all of that and we got used games all those horrible features that you know that were originally introduced were scrapped so here's the launch we got the launch november 22nd 2013 a little you know good amount of first party titles um dead rising 3 rise Forza mortar sport 5 and killer instinct uh which games did we play out of all those guys i know we had some third-party games but uh let's talk about the launch would you guys think about the launch third-party games first-party games and xbox live itself as much people didn't like it as much i would say rise was the one for me i like those action adventure games uh i really enjoyed it i wish they'd make a sequel you know i do too it was kind of like the counter for god of war if you really think about it instead of being greek there were romans yeah i played that game at least three times over that game was so freaking good man yeah, the good thing about Rise also, uh, it, it showed off the console, showed off the console's power uh, graphically because Rise was a beautiful looking game back in 2013. I mean, it looked really good. Well, I forgot one thing actually too about the power of the Xbox One. It was technically more expensive and less, less powerful, powerful than the PS4. Yep. And that's another factor altogether because the resolution was a big thing, right? So Rise ran a 900p, beautiful game beautiful game but it can never reach that target 1080p yeah, yeah. man that's unfortunate that, you know what i think if they were to take that connect down the price would have dropped at least yeah, it would have been way more viable yeah um rise rise i really enjoyed as well i do agree with you guys there rise was definitely a very underrated game but i know a lot of people were kind of just like ah it was very bland but i really enjoyed it dead rising 3 is another first party title i really enjoyed with uh xbox i really loved Dead Rising 3, and they finally got it right with Dead Rising 3. The character was okay, but I really felt that they got it right with uh, that game. KI was fun, uh, and uh, so was uh, Forza, but, uh, you know, those are specific targeted games. It's not for everybody. Um, I, I, I I was a sucker. I bought all the launch titles. I'm not going to lie. I'm sure some of you did, too. Like... Uh, Dead Rising, uh, Rise, I didn't play... Th- the motorsports I didn't play. I hated Killer Instincts, but I think well, Dead Rising I played with with Pat and Gato. <laughs> yeah, Dead Rising was a lot of fun. I really liked Dead Rising Three. Definitely was a really good uh, launch title, 100. Um, percent Killer Instinct I believe was free, wasn't it? I, it wasn't too bad. I I, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed Killer Instinct. Yeah, no, it was fun. I mean, I'm not I I, I like fighting games, but to a limited capacity. But I enjoyed it. It was great that they brought it back right after all, all those years. So it was that was a big deal at that time. Let's talk about our experience. Um, I vivid, you know, with Xbox Live. Obviously, with launch, the cool thing that I remember you and I did a lot, um, Argonaut, was we did a lot of Xbox record, like Xbox record that. So that was another decent feature with oh, the Connect was that we could just yell xbox record that we had a lot of fun playing battlefield 4 which was a fun game i actually really liked that that was another launch title i picked up third party launch title um it was a lot of fun and of course i remember i still remember to this day your kamikaze video and everything like that but let's talk about i did not like xbox live at launch the party system was a disaster i remember a lot of times you kept getting kicked out of the party constantly constantly being kicked out of the party and I just didn't like the layout like from what I remember when it first came out the layout like inviting somebody to a party was a five minute task yeah, I don't know if you guys remember that I I remember it It was fucking awful because I know we all try to jump in and parties together constantly with the amount of troubles we couldn't even play together it came to the point like it just you know fuck it wasn't yeah. there a limited capacity for parties at one point? Because back then, yeah, like that, I think it was. I think it was eight. Yeah, I, I think, think at I the think, time, yeah, I think it was eight. The limit, yeah, at the time, the limit was eight. But the problem was, I remember we would be in a party, and you would just constantly, constantly get disconnected all the time. And especially related, I, remember with the games, like oh, we're doing a match, and somehow 
right when the match about to start, boom, you're out. And you're just like, yeah. dude, what? Exactly. And even, like, just, just the layout of it was, like, it was bad. Like, even to boot up a game and, like I said, inviting someone to a party was a, a five-minute task. I was like, I remember I was trying to invite, like, it was, it took, because I remember from Xbox 360, it's boom, go to their name, boom, invite to party. This one, it's like, I got to go to here. I got to go down there. I have to, like, it was, it was just bad. I mean, setting it up, like, setting up and retrieving my stuff was easy. Like, I remember I got, I logged in, my name connected rather quickly. Everything was good, but it was the operating it was just, system yeah. wasn't optimized, man. That's the yeah. reality of it. Like, like it was what compared to what it is now. Like it's night and day. It was. It's a very different world. A very, it, you know, which we're going to talk about soon is about the leadership, right? Uh, on the direction the Xbox was taking, right? They were center, like center on media, right? It was like, oh, well, you can control your TV. You can do the channel controls. You voice yeah. commands. It's going to be instantaneously. And none of that really came into execution when it got released. And then, you know, for us gamers that, you know, maybe those features are cool and we want to use it, it was like, hey, man, you know, our party chat is not working. Uh, you know, that's one of the most important things for our <laughs> multiplayer. And that was going on for like a month. I remember that party chat you wanna, issue was... You, the, the, was... You know, when, you know, they were launching this console, they didn't really emphasize how much the gaming of it they more did the entertainment oh yeah you're you're connected to the tv you can you know watch movies together on the t you know the, the television yeah. you know they they went strong at the entertainment side of watching tv and movies and stuff and not enough towards the gaming yeah i 100 percent agree and, and we saw that trend happen for a while even at e3s with the 360 era it was heavy entertainment with the connect like you could control the music and then it carried right into Xbox One when the reveal they talked about the Halo TV show that we still have not gotten yet. That supposedly we're getting on Showtime whenever that is. Which um, I hope they soon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they did. Yeah, they just talked about entertainment wise. But I mean, you know what? And then after all that, you know, it started to pick up some steam. Uh, Dom Matrix left, thank God. And uh, Phil Spencer uh, came in and kind of geared xbox back to the games rather than it you know it being like all entertainment it went back to being gaming and i thought that is when xbox started the trend um definitely in the right direction once phil spencer took over yeah i couldn't be happy when he took over i was excited about it. i'm like fucking finally you know phil spencer is actually going to try to change the things and i think somewhat he is actually doing a better job at it yeah. He changed, he completely changed the messaging, right? Like that's that that's the first thing. Like the Xbox that we got with Don Matrick was completely different from what from what Phil Spencer is doing now with it, you know. It's continuous optimizing, continuous improvement, right? Versus just be like, Hey, uh, this is what we to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It was just <laughs> it, it, really like good that. Don really got that message out there for us. What did we so all in all though, what did we think of the original launch of Xbox? I think it was sloppy, uh, for the most part. You know, there wasn't enough content. Period. You know, like there wasn't enough launch exclusives. There was too many issues with it, and I think there was a hardware problem with certain consoles with the power supply. I think it was. Um, so, yes, yeah, so what that power? Yeah, this power supply. Yes, it was a very sloppy one, and hopefully they've learned from those mistakes going into the next gen. Yeah, I um, I, I think it definitely. I agree on the sloppy side. I, I actually, I was a bit, I was. I was very impressed with the launch titles, actually. I did like the launch titles. Um, but yeah, definitely very sloppy. Operating system was garbage. I mean, it was a step backward from the 360, which I was on. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, we're, how could you take a step back when we're entering a new generation? But all in all, actually, um, the controller, of course, I still really enjoyed the controller. But um, yeah, definitely very sloppy start for Xbox. Yeah, that's one thing they always do good with is the controllers. I mean, I, I don't think... I mean, I miss the old, like, the old original Xbox controller. I like that big bulky motherfucker. But I still think they do a good job with it overall. 100%. And, like, I, you see, like, how they improved it, right? Like, the version that we have now, you know, kind of moved itself away from that proprietary technology with that, you know, dongle that you had to put for headsets. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, you see... What Phil Spencer did, you know, even Xbox One S and X, right? As soon as we're going to start talking about that, 
you know, the brick is inside the system, right? We don't need to carry that thing around with our system. It's just one cable, smooth cable, straight to the power outlet, and that's all we need. But it's I, like you see all these improvements going as it happens throughout the years. I will say... Very different Xbox. I do like that uh, the bottom of the controller connector for the headset, because I can mute easily and control the volume gotcha. easier than going into the menu. I, I do like that still. It also kind of sucked that it took forever for like a, a Turtle Beach or an Astro headset to finally get working on these next-gen yeah. consoles. My God, I remember the, the freaking garbage headset. No that... transition, honestly, right? Like, if we were, I recall that, like, there was like they the, at the beginning it was like you either buy new headsets or you're really shit out of luck. Yeah, <laughs> and it really wasn't a good. I I did not get my first, and I'm I'm a fan of Turtle Beach. Um, I know, Argon, I know your Astro. I'm not sure what Dan, you, uh, Pizza Man uses, but I'm a fan of Turtle Beach. I didn't get my first Turtle Beach until 20, 2015 when Rainbow Six Siege came out. And that's two years after launch. That is when I got yeah. my first Turtle Beach. I've been using and Turtle that... Beach since Xbox One. Uh, I love the Turtle Beaches, but recently, probably like two years ago, I went to uh, HyperX. Grand is really getting big now. That's yeah. for sure. So let's talk about the steps um, forward that Xbox is taking. Let's talk about, um, you know, as E3 started to come around, how about uh, backwards compatibility? That was very huge uh, when Phil Spencer announced that. First they did it with Xbox 360, and then at the one E3 they announced original Xbox games. Uh, some games were also backwards compatible. What, do we th what are our thoughts on that big announcement on, obviously, backwards compatibility? Because obviously with the 360 it was very limited um, same thing with uh, PS3, unless you got the original that came out, uh, the 60 gigabyte or the 20 gigabyte, it was very limited. So, and when Phil Spencer announced that, it was a huge lineup of backwards compatibility games. What do you guys think of that? I thought it was amazing. It was really good. And not only that, right? So, they, you know, of course, you got to talk to the developers and the publishers to get these titles in. But there's one thing that they did better than any. Any? Did you ever hear about it? So they get these titles that are backwards compatible and improve upon them. But it's not the developers of these team, these games that are doing it. It's the Xbox team there is doing it. Like Red Dead, 4K, improve uh, shader quality, shadows, lighting, all of it. And that's just the Xbox team. And a lot of backwards t uh, titles do that. Like uh, Final Fantasy 13, all three of them. Given I know it's not the greatest Final Fantasy <laughs> to our listeners, but. All improved, 4K, better uh, shading, better textures. I thought it was amazing, and I still think it's a killer feature for Series X that's coming out. Um, and I hope they keep doing it. I think they're only going to get bigger with it. I mean, there's still yeah. quite a few games I want to see backwards compatible. Um, so I think they're still going to be doing it. And, you know, with them even giving it to us, most games for free don't in the Game Pass too is just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, back at the and and it's not like they only announced like a handful of games when they announced backwards compatibility. They announced like a crap ton of backwards compatibility. And there's then a lot of the titles that they did for the original Xbox are big titles. So it's not like they gave you like here's some you know crappy titles. You know it's both Kotors. It's you know Battlefront one and two. There's a lot of Star Wars games on there. There's I want the Godfather. Some, some, yeah. yeah, there's some good ones on there that were that were really good. There are some that are missing, yes, but they have released some really good backwards compatible games. Um, again, trending upward here, of course, as Dan mentioned it in his conversation, Game Pass. I mean, what's there really, you know, what more could we say about how amazing the feature of Game Pass is? Every first-party Xbox game at launch, uh, they also acquire some really good uh, third-party titles as well. And it almost makes you wonder, should I just, you know, how good Game Pass is? Maybe I should just wait for the game to come out on Game Pass rather than paying $60. Do we have those feelings? Or, you know, what, of course, what else more good could we say about Game you know, Pass? The one good thing about Game Pass is, you know, a lot of these, even these small developers who put their game in here that aren't exclusive to Xbox, they put their game in these Game Passes, and from what I hear, Xbox case takes care of them very well as far as paying them wise. That. So I give props to them for, you know, spending money to bring more companies in to, uh, you know, bring us all together with these games. And these games are phenomenal. And I think Game Pass is probably one of the best things Xbox has ever done. I mean, it saves you us a lot of money in the long run. 
because instead of paying sixty dollars per game, all you know, all these games that are coming out that are Xbox exclusive that we want <laughs> that's coming to the Game Pass. Hey, what do you what do you pay like a, a little over a hundred a year? Yeah, then all this, right. Oh, sorry. You can go ahead, but I was just gonna give you the. the oh no, it was just a quickly saying that even with Game Pass Ultimate now it comes with gold, so now it also saves you on Xbox Gold. And it and it includes uh, X, uh, PC as well, PC Game Pass. Yeah. yeah, Ultimate. So this is the thing, right? Think about this, right? In a long perspective, right? Right now we all bought gold. Some of them got converted to Ultimate. At, like I'm um, Dan, especially knows that, right? Dan, with the betas that we tried out, they converted our gold into uh, Ultimate passes. But in the long run, right, uh, you're paying like 15 bucks a month for Ultimate, which gives you Gold Game Pass, Game Pass for PC, all these, these servers all included into one package. Uh, pretty good, if you think about it, right? Uh, you pay $15 for Netflix. So why would you pay for gaming, right? And, it, and, the, and the best part is it doesn't need to be streaming. You can install these sti titles into your system. So you don't need to worry about some streaming going down and your internet just dropping. It's there, ready for to go right after installing. Yeah, and also they recently threw in what Project X Cloud into it as well. Yeah. X Cloud, so even more stuff on top of the cake. Yeah, that's another thing too for Android users with uh, Project X Cloud. That's another thing that's becoming. Um, damn, have you you have an Android phone? Have you uh, tried Project yeah, X Cloud? Yeah, I was I was playing the beta of that when it first came out man i was playing um oh, dude i always forget the name of the game what was the i was playing some big game I forgot uh but it worked really well i played it at work when i was at work in my office i was playing it there it worked beautifully uh does it work off, better than the google stadia <laughs> you know what surprisingly i did play stadia for a little while and i'm pretty impressed with that as well it's actually not as bad. I heard some terrifying stories of it. So like as, it's as like it's as, a 50-50 depending on the person. As long as you have the correct internet speed for it. I played it on Wi-Fi and hardwired, so no issues. But back to xCloud, I played it at work on, you know, data service. And sure, those small hiccups here and there because I was in New York. Fucking motherfucking busy fucking area. But it ran wonderful, though. Like, it ran, it ran pretty good. Get that controller holder and walking around with it. You guys see them in that on the I advertising. A, I, big ass I can see Dan doing it. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> I mean, it's. It, I mean, hopefully one day it'll get to Apple. I mean, I hope so. I definitely would love to. Who knows? Not try with it. Apple restricting motherfuckers now. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully that'll change. I hope so. Everyone should be able to enjoy that. It's a. It's a great feature. And a, another big thing that they also did was acquiring the JRPGs and a lot of the other titles that were very exclusive to PlayStation. One of them being Yakuza, which is on Game Pass. Um, any, you excited? You know, I mean, I love the Yakuza series. It's a very, I mean, if you guys have never played Yakuza, it's a very underrated series. I mean, it's yeah, it definitely is. It, it's actually a really good story, but like you get lost in the amount of stuff you can do in the game. Like that's really what. Uh, grasp the game just there's so much to do like besides even like the side missions like the side missions aren't just your fetch quests they're really fun side missions but like singing karaoke playing baseball like it was you know it was a lot of fun but what other JRPGs did they you know I know uh, Argonaut you're more of the JRPG uh, game player what else did they acquire they acquire all the Final Fantasies which was a first time ever I ever like they got uh, I think it was the original seven which they remastered for PC and PS4 and Steam. They got that in, in there for it. And um, they got it, uh, eight, well, actually, eight, yeah, eight is in there. Nine, 10, 11. Well, 11's online, sorry. That's wrong. I apologize, listeners. Uh, 12. And then 13 is remastered for, uh, well, not really technically remastered, but upgraded for backwards compatibility. And 15, it's been there. It's been multi platform. They have a really good deal. Kingdom Hearts is part of Game Pass, too. Which is phenomenal. All three of all like the the whole three series, well, 1.5 and 2.5. They like Phil Spencer did like multiple multiple like trips to Japan. Like there were like there were articles about that every other month. Like hey, uh, he went to talk to developers there. Like Nier Automata. That's not really a JRPG, but has kind of some RPG elements. They got that into their in, into their system. Um, Bandai Namco has a really good relationship with them now, too, uh, which delivers a lot of them. Like, Scarlet Nexus is going to come out in the Series X. Uh, I 
I'm telling you, you know, it's going to be very different this generation in terms of like other than exclusive titles, which are timed some usually. Uh, we're going to get a lot of the titles that were only on PS4 and now on Xbox for sure. And I mean that you look at Xbox as um, as it grew. Obviously, the original Xbox there really was. Bi- I don't I don't even think there was really that many JRPGs at all on the original Xbox. And also, uh, uh, Fantasy Star Online, I believe, is on uh, Xbox One as well. That was a yeah, big thing. I know there was a. That's been big in like you know Japan, man. They've been waiting yeah. for that game for years. The, the years Dreamcast era, the, the Dreamcast era, that was like the huge uh, Fantasy Star Online. And then when Fantasy Star Online Two came out for Xbox, I know that was a, a big thing. I mean, again, you know, the original Xbox, there was barely any JRPGs. Xbox 360, I remember when they they got Final Fantasy on the console, which was always a PlayStation game, but they were still kind of slowly getting Japanese games, but this generation, you definitely saw more uh, Japanese titles, uh, which is good. I mean, the, the Japanese market is, is a really good market, and they do got some good games. They definitely expanded themselves, right? Like, so if they, like, if it was only, like, Nintendo and PlayStation that could deliver those titles, like, it mm-hmm. makes it very hard for them to sell to that to that group of people that are mainly JRPG players, right? And J- Japanese-related yeah. anime-based games. Like, they want those titles on Xbox. And, like, to give you a perfect example, Tokyo Game Show coming out later this month. Xbox is doing a showing there. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, oh, tell me yeah. when that does happen. I mean, that's crazy, dude. I never thought I would see them over there. Yeah. Tokyo Game Show. Yeah, we're gonna get to see Resident Evil 8. I can't fu- I can't fucking wait for that at yeah. Tokyo Game Show. I'm so stoked to see gameplay for that. Yeah, um, Loving it. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's... Yeah, and again, trending upward. But let's talk about um, some of the downwards. Um, you know, of course, the Xbox is not perfect. It makes some mistakes. Of course, uh, <laughs> Mixer being one of them. Um, we won't talk too much about that because we talked about That's that in other uh, podcast. Yeah, but it was very it was very heavily integrated into Xbox. Come on, like Mixer was very heavily integrated into of Xbox, course. and that was the that, that was an issue. But let's talk about um, some canceled games before we get into the games that we liked. Um, I know this was Dan's favorite game here, Fable Legends. Fuck um, out of here, bro. That was. <laughs> That was one canceled game here on Xbox. That was I wouldn't even say disappointing. I don't even think it was on beta forever. That's how it, it was. I it think was. a lot of people. <laughs> I think a lot of people were actually very happy that this game got canceled. To be honest with you, but there was one game that I was very disappointed that got canceled, which was Scalebound. I think a lot um, of people were waiting for that game. A lot of people. I, I was I one mean, of them. And that yeah. game play, That game played E3. The game looked so much fun, and. I when they canceled it in 2017, I was so pissed. It was so out of nowhere too. If you really think yeah. about it, it was like, hey, uh, they were betting hard on it with Platinum Games, and they're like, oh, uh, sorry, it's not coming out anymore. But <laughs> supposedly rem- they had developing issues. Yeah, but I think it was I think it was a developer issue, not a Microsoft, but a develop a developer. But man, that game looked a lot of fun. I remember when they showed the gameplay at E3. I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait for this game and. It gets some cancellations there. Um, any other uh, uh, Xbox falling out? Well, let's be real, right? Um, Master Chief Collection was in uh, functional when it got released. Yeah, and I mean, it... Halo Five didn't really appease the fans, even yeah. though I thought it was okay. Um, a lot of people were, didn't like it. Yeah, if you were looking to play Master Chief Collection for the multiplayer, you were sadly disappointed at launch. I mean, if you kind of were just there for this. The story mode, you're fine. The story mode worked just fine, but the multiplayer was a complete and utter disaster. Like, it was big time. I think it was down for about a month. It was down for a very long time. It felt like forever until they finally patched that uh, online up. Yeah. It took them a long time. I think, I, think... I think two of the biggest games were Fable Legends and Scalebound, at least the ones that really impacted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as far as cancellations, but definitely scale bound. I think was more obviously. Number I don't even one. think anyone really. Yeah, I don't think really anybody wanted Fable Legends. After I really I played, don't. I did not want it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone really asked for Fable Legends. But luckily, we're getting a pretty much a seems like a reboot. So very excited about that with Series X. But I mean, um, let's talk about the consoles that they've released also. So then we got the the. Let's talk about the design of the three consoles here really quickly. So we had the 
um, freaking VCR original Xbox One, yeah. and we got the smaller Xbox One S, which I thought was definitely much needed, and then of course the Xbox One X. Of course, uh, I know you two own smaller. those, much smaller, but uh, the original Xbox, what did we think of the VCR garbage design? I thought it was terrible. Uh, I didn't like the uh, the plastic on top. hated that yeah, plastic that on top. Uh, it, it like it scratched you, you, super You didn't easy. even do nothing to it and it scratched itself, <laughs> yeah, right? That's how look, bad it was. Look at it. Like... I remember a piece of dust flute came down. It was a dust magnet, too. <laughs> Like it was that was a dust magnet and a half. Yeah, it wasn't their best design at all. I I did I did like the slim though. The slim was nice, and I think with the X it got better. I really liked the design of the X. Uh, they they made a really nice plastic on it. Uh, they made it look really nice. Uh, Not only that, it's a brick, so if you ever get a you know attacked at your own home, you can use it as a weapon a hundred percent. Yeah, it's knocking over the head. Yeah. Oh, they will be they will end up in the hospital with, <laughs> if you throw that thing on them. That thing is a brick. It is a brick. And I, re- I remember I was packing my original Xbox One. I was bringing it. I was bringing it somewhere. I don't remember. And I was like, "My God, why the fuck is this freaking so damn heavy?" I'm like, "Jesus!" I was like, "This is the eighth generation of consoles. I thought we're supposed to have like smaller consoles now, but that's a lie because look at the Series X and the PS5. So <laughs> that that's a lie. But yeah. I love. I, I'm happy. A couple of years later, um, we got the. Xbox One S, which definitely was much better in size, and then of course the Xbox One X also had a really good I'm size. About so this. The, the the Xbox One when it first came out, that had a separate power brick, didn't it? Yeah, it did. That's yes, how. It did. Yeah, it had a separate DS power brick on top of the a big fucking box. Have. It was like overkill. Yeah, we were still we were still living in like freaking 2004 with a freaking <laughs> separate power brick. I don't, I don't understand why they like that power brick thing. And if you really think about it, right, that power brick was one of the main issues, like Dan said before, that the system went awry. The power brick just died. And there was nothing you could do. Your system is gone without it. Yep. And now, and also, and then before we um, go, start heading towards the games, what did we think of the operating system over time? Obviously, when it first came out, the operating system was trash. It took you five minutes to invite people to a party. It, the just did not look good at all compared to 360. I almost wanted to turn on my 360 because how bad the layout looked on Xbox One, but it's definitely much improved now. It's a lot easier to navigate, and they've definitely did a better job um, over the years with the operating system as time went on. With me with this, like the last two years maybe, or three years, is when the operating system really became like this a really good thing like now i'm he's running the new operating system which is going to be like similar to what's running on series x uh it is day and night like i i love that they didn't give up on it right like that's the main factor they didn't just like hey man um cool i'm gonna tweak little things no they were like we're gonna redesign some of the stuff that's happening with the system you know pins don't work all right we're gonna make it better uh, you want to change your like your screen for the, the the gaming store, which now it's brand new too. Here we're gonna give you a brand new gaming store. Uh, I think they made a lot of good strides for updating. Um, I still hope they continue that. Uh, yeah, I love being an insider for that. I love trying the new stuff. I feel like Xbox makes you feel like you're part of it, right? Like you're like, hey, uh, we're trying this new feature. Uh, how, what do you guys think about it? Yeah. What do you um... think, Dan? You know, when it first came out, you know, I thought I thought the dashboard was... It looked good. Did it work good? <laughs> no, not quite. But, you know, Xbox really does listen to their their users. And they, they've done a lot of improvements over the years. I think this is, the, what, their third or fourth dashboard change already? And I like this one a lot. This one's a lot yeah. more smoother, better transitions, you know, seamless. But, dude, that store is fucking beautiful. And faster, right? That's what yeah. they said on the... It's, on the, it's definitely on the faster. New... And yeah. I do like it you know the they made the integrating your home page a lot better for you you know customizing it yeah. a lot better for yourself for what you want to do so i think they did a fabulous job on that and i love the how they add those small little things you know like pins pins saved my life man uh meeting people in parties yes. like that pins, and changing yeah. the volumes up and down like that that's a beautiful add-on and it's really nice to see that xbox actually listens to their their people, you know. Oh, yeah, the, too, of the blade, right? That blade, when you press the Xbox symbol in your control, and that blade shows up and it gives you the full control of the system, like, you know, you can access your party, your messages, go to the game store, 
all of it in one shot. I love that. Which is customizable because you can move. Once you hit that button in the middle, you can move the tabs where you want them. Yep. Yeah, compared to before, you had to go through like 8,000 screens to get where you wanted to go. So definitely was... Don't forget that. That was the worst part of it. Sometimes you went into the gaming store and it's just like a black screen and you're just like... (laughs) Oh, I guess I gotta close the app and reopen it. Yeah, yeah and then the, now also the app is all the app works great on our phones too. You can just obviously buy games off from your phone now, and it downloads right I, to your I system. I use that the a app, lot actually to, to install yes. new games. I just go on the app, and yeah. install. And it, it works great. It does really well, and uh, you know, um, on top of that, we're finally getting animated fucking backgrounds. <laughs> I can't wait for that. You know, PlayStation has been doing that for a while. Just bringing it up quickly. I love like they do it. And it has like that. The music you know, as well. I have the Forza Horizon yeah. one and it has the Forza Horizon like music playing as well in the background. And it's organic. Like I like the theme. The theme in the back is kind of like you saw the colors flashing through and then like vibrating like that. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. I hope, I really hope uh, they keep give us uh, customization options. Yeah. And yeah. even change the titles. Like the if you can change the tiles uh, on the system, like putting different themes on it, like PlayStation does, that'll be awesome too. Like a Halo tile. Yeah, and you know, it'd be you know, cool. You know how they have the white and dark theme. If you customize that as well, yeah, I think that'll be cool. And you know, we should probably talk a little bit about how they improve their avatar creations. Yes, uh, that that was a really please. good, really good part on that because you could do a lot more with it. It feels a lot better to do yeah. it. Like it's a lot more easy to customize your character. Yeah, I liked what they did with the avatar system. Uh, they definitely improved on it, and I'm glad they brought it back. I really liked. I really liked what they did. And for people that don't like avatar, I like too that the fact that now you can put your own picture, right? Like if you want to put in in our mom's basement avatar icon, you can do that. That's the best part of it. Like you don't need to select pre-selected ones. You can go through your app on your phone and be like, "Hey, man, I actually like this picture. I'm going to throw it in there." Yeah, that's 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 great, man. And they're still improving it, which is really nice. Yep. Guys, we're going to take a quick 30-second sponsor break, and we will be right back. Are you looking to start a podcast? Well, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. They offer a lot of great services, such as their creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need in a podcast in one place. Did I forget to mention that it's free? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Now let's talk about the the first party games. There was a lot. We Argonaut and I discussed this a little bit. We are not going to count timed exclusives. So Tomb Raider is out. Dead Rising 4 is out. And at one point, I'm also, we're not going to talk about games that were one point exclusive that are now on PlayStation. Cuphead. Cuphead's now on PlayStation, but at one point it was exclusive. I wasn't aware of that. It's, uh... <laughs> no one told me that. Huh? No one told me yeah. that. I don't, get, I don't get any of those anyway, so, I mean, don't, it don't bother me. So I'm going to talk about some of the, the good games that I, so I'm only going to talk about the games that I personally played. I'm not going to talk about uh, the games that I have not played because I can't judge them. That's how it should be. So... So if any of you guys, of course, have played a first-party game that I have not played and want to talk about it, of course, you know, feel free. I know Argonauts played ReCore, so uh, I I did not. But uh, uh, definitely what... Oh, well, you know, I happened? think a lot of us are going to have very similar favorites on there. I would, I would yeah, for the, there's a lot of good for ones the, out there. Yeah, for the most part. So I'm going to... Definitely one of my first favorites is Gears 4 and 5. I mean, definitely uh, I love the story direction. Um, and four, we played as um, Marcus Venus's son and things like that. I really enjoyed Gears Four. Gears Five definitely was an improvement for me as well with that little with the little linear open world, and where the story obviously the ending was fucking crazy, and where the story's headed. I can't wait for Gears Six, but Gears Four and Five definitely love. Uh, Co- uh, Coalition is the developer now instead yeah. of. Uh, I, I really liked. I really enjoyed. Uh, uh, Gears 4 and 5. I have Gears on my list too. Uh, I actually really like this Gears. Uh, besides me getting halfway in the game, my save game corrupting. Oh, yeah. And starting that over. Fi- that was <laughs> Gears 5, that, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was Gears 5. Yeah. But was, I, yeah. I had a lot of fun with that game, though. Regardless of that, I, I still enjoyed it a lot. 
I remember you messaged me. You're like, yo, I have to fucking restart my game. It's corrupted. I actually haven't finished Gears 5. Um, I got to the, the desert. No spoilers more than that. And um, I'm this time I'm going to wait for Series X. Yeah, so I can get you know, those beautiful we... ray tracing. Yeah, for and, real, uh, right? Yeah. You uh, get me? So I was like, <laughs> I'm already closed here. A couple months more. What's going to hurt? You know, surprisingly, it was a short game, though. It was, yeah. yeah. But if you did the other, if you did the stuff around the area, it you know it it was cool. But the ending is crazy. I'll just tell you that it the was. ending was, was really good. good. That was a crazy ending. Um, I said it before at the top of the podcast. Dead Rising Three is a first party game I really enjoyed. I loved. Uh, they pretty much finally added what was good about the first game and the second game. Put it in the third game. Dead Rising Three for me as well. What else you guys have? I have a couple too. I. Well, I'll uh, I'll throw on that and then throw on one of mine. Um, so I played Dead Rising uh, quite a bit with Rage Quit and Gato. <clears throat> Fun game. I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know the one thing I can't play that single player. I feel like that's more of a co-op only kind of game for me. But overall, I thought it was a, a pretty fun game. So, and then yeah, I, I played I played it too. But I also too, threw I... Um, Horizon um, Forza Horizon Four on there. That's yeah, still yeah. a fucking great game. I put the I put the whole so I put the whole series. I think the I mean the Forza Horizon series was phenomenal. Killer, uh, killer in this generation for racing. Yeah, yeah I only I put four because I haven't really actually played any other the Horizons until four. I mean, there's so much to do in those Horizon games, man. There's so many races and the car customization, the multiplayer, the, game the Horizon, the game modes. Like the Horizon series was a ton of fun this generation 100%. three and four killed it like there was no way to better describe them like they what they did and executed on it was like amazing like in terms of like w how much you could do customize your cars we even have one of our friends remember steven uh he uh fucking went Zach. crazy about Dude, designing he, cars fucking he played that game 20 percent maniac i know series x <laughs> is kicking it off with motorsport so i'm really excited for when on series x the horizon series because it's a rotation so right now it's motorsport. After that, it's going to be Horizon. So I'm really excited for Series X. I also threw in um, Sunset Overdrive uh, by Insomniac. Love that game. Phenomenal game. My PlayStation now. Yes. Way, yeah. Uh, yeah, I played I know, it. But... It was fun, but not not on the list of favorites. But PlayStation missed out on this one, though, man. Sunset Overdrive was. Oh, it's definitely. It's one of definitely... a kind. It's definitely an Insomniac game, man. The gameplay is great. I love the grinding on the, uh, like, oh, the weapon. The weapons were outrageous, and the monsters, like, they're all. Everyone's turning into a monster because of the energy drink. It was, it was such an Insomniac uh, story and game. It was, it was phenomenal. I loved it. Uh, Sunset Overdrive. That was a treat. I actually put a, a more of a recent game on there. I put Battletoads, and I thought it was a fucking great game. Yeah, I haven't played it. I was thinking about I, I'm I'm gonna play it, but uh, yeah, I mean, what, what are the thoughts on Battletoads? Does it feel like old Battletoads difficulty and uh, well, platform? it is kind of difficult. Uh, I mean, of course, you could pick your difficulty, and I thought it, you know, some some fucking boards are really hard on even the normal areas, like ones where you got a speed run and shit. Some of those can be pretty challenging. I tried to get all the collectibles on them, but it was a lot of fun, man. I it's a one game I destroyed in like three days. It was a lot of fun. Is Streets of Rage exclusive? No, no. It's on every platform. That's on every. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I was thinking about adding, but I'm like, wait a minute. I think it it's came out already. I actually added. Um, I did add the Master Chief Collection, um, despite <laughs> it having it issues with multiplayer. But the thing was, I didn't pick up the Master Chief Collection for the multiplayer. I picked it up for obviously the story mode, playing through all the Halo stories again. Then they added ODST. Then they added Reach. So pretty much all the Halo stories are uh, in one package. So that's why I added. And of course, Halo Two was remastered, which looked phenomenal. So I, that's I could care less that the multiplayer bombed. I really it didn't bother me all that much. So I was very excited to play through all the story again. All right, uh, I threw on a um, a respawn uh, Titanfall. I mean, that's a pretty classic uh, Xbox game right there, which was awesome. The story, story came in number two. Dude, the multiplayer dude, was really good. Dude, we we put a shit ton in the Titan. I remember when Titanfall came out, man. We put a that that's insane. That's, that's on my list too. That came out in March. I remember that was like the first big 
uh, launch title for for me. And wow, man, we played the shit out of the beta, the multiplayer. I mean, we played yeah. that game nonstop, man. And it, 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 it felt it felt fresh, like it it was a new shoot. It felt like a fresh new shooter, obviously with the mechs and everything like that. And yeah. I mean, even though Titanfall Two is multi-platform, to me, Titanfall Two is probably my favorite shooter of this whole generation. I mean, Titanfall, it, it was a really good series. I hope we get to see a third one. I hope they could just stop with that fucking Apex Legends crap and make a Titanfall Three already. Yeah, you they know, will stop that. They were making a ton of money out of yeah, it. Yeah, I know. But you they know. did a really good job with Star Wars, though. Also con- with Respawn as well. So. Titanfall yeah. was good in mech and out of mech, which yes. is really nice because running around, shooting, running, gunning actually felt really good. The uh, mechs did the craziest things. The mechs were not like the most important thing. It just shifted yeah. gameplay. Like you had to like yeah. strategize differently. Like when a mech came in, you're like, oh crap. Now I really have to like make sure I don't die or anything like that. Bring out the heavy hitters. And the mechs didn't feel overpowered either, man. Like, the mechs were not OP, which I, I think was a con- probably a concern for most players. Like, oh, my God, if oh, you get a mech, you're going to get crushed. But no, man, it was it was an adrenaline rush when you're on that mech and you're removing the friggin' power supply and then you're bl- you're just shooting the crap out of it and it blows up. Like, it was it was good, man. And the game modes were fun. I liked the capture the flag, the team deathmatch. It was a – that was a really good shooter. Um I threw this one in there, and I know uh, Quantum Break by um, what's Air the at Remedy. At Remedy, man, yeah. wow! And I, I mean, <laughs> very. And it's not a, it's not a big talked about game, but I loved the TV show aspect of it. When you're done with the uh, level, and it kind of just goes into like a 30 minute TV episode, yeah. like it was awesome. I loved it. The gameplay was the gameplay was like a mixture for me, like Max Payne and Alan Wake, I loved it. It was. It, it definitely was the mapping for if you really think about yeah. control, right? Like if you look at it, that was like the map of how control somewhat it was going to play like because a lot of the features that you see in control are kind of in Quantum Break. Yeah, and it was just it was it was very, and that's something you don't really see too much where you're done with the level, you make a choice, and it goes into a TV episode. I believe the first episode is like is the same no matter what the choice you pick, but. The other episodes are different, which I thought was really cool. Like, I really like that. And you play as Iceman from X-Men, so can't beat that. Yeah, and, cool, can you? and the main villain is, uh, what's his name from uh, Game of Thrones? Littlefinger. Uh, yeah, yeah, Littlefinger. So there you go right there. You're Iceman going after Littlefinger. So that's a very important part. All right. I think this is a game that Pat's not going to completely agree with, but, you know, the game has gotten better. <clears throat> I'm gonna put Sea of Thieves in there. I still I play know, a ton was, of time. I with knew some it friends. was coming. I was like, I I'm still play. For it. I still play. It has gotten way better since launch. Way better. And you know what? They're still adding content in there. Still going strong. I mean, they have a pretty yeah. strong community yeah. still. Sea of Thieves has a good community. I'll jump on that game in a minute. Um, my last game I put on my favorites is uh, the Rare Replay. Really loved going back and playing. All the rare titles from Battle Toads to Banjo Kazooie to Conker's Bad Fur Day, like it was great to go back, and it was only twenty bucks to go back and literally play all those titles. Like that was phenomenal. So to now jump on the least favorite, so I'll jump on Sea of Thieves first since Dan the Pizza Man brought it up. You know, I, I know it has a big community now and stuff like that, but this this game was supposed to be Rare's return, like. When this game was shown, everybody's like, "Oh my God, Rare is back! Rare is back! No more dance, no more fucking Connect games, like no more garbage games anymore. Rare's back!" And uh, we did everything in three hours well, at launch. Yeah, so uh, yeah, well, I didn't have much content at the at the end, but it has definitely gotten better. Like they're adding pets in the next coming patch. I mean, it's definitely gotten better. Uh, you know, you haven't played since. So it's okay. You don't understand yet, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I don't want to. I watch people stream it, and it's to me, it still looks like it, it all depends on who I play with, I guess. But organize there any games that that we missed that you liked or anything like that? You pretty much talked to all about of it, all of them that I really enjoy. I mean, um, you know, if we're really gonna talk about the uh, the bad ones, I'm ready for it. Like State of Disaster too. 
Okay, that's so that was what I was going to bring up as well. State of Decay 2, which I was really looking forward to because State of Decay 1 was really good, but... It was like State of Disaster, what the fuck? And they're like, oh, Decay, duh. I mean, my God, man, you talk about a glitch fest. I, I, I encountered one of those glitches. I drove All my car time. drove my car into a rock, it and it got stuck. I remember Dan joined my game. He had none of his weapons. I think you were playing with this Argonaut. He's like, I don't have my weapons. I don't have any of my weapons. I, I probably did because, man, it's like, you know how, like, you know, you hear all these stories, right? The developers go through, like, the testing phases, make sure to take out the bugs. They probably are like, nah, man, you know what? Skip that part. S send the game out. It's ready. And what was frustrating about State of the K2 is that this time it was actually funded by Microsoft. The first game, it was just an indie title by Undead Labs. And it was just strictly indie. And this time around, Microsoft funded it. And this is the final product that we got. A glitch. And I mean, don't get me wrong. The game was still good when it worked. But it was very disappointing. Yeah. It's interesting it how it changed, trouble, right? Man. Like, um, they supposedly they improved upon it and they started fixing it. But, like, you know, you're already fighting for this generation and the attention of it. So, like, you put a game out like that and you're just like, dude... What are you doing? Like, maybe it's just the type of gamer that I am. That I know, like Dan says, CFDs is better now. You just said State of Decay is better now. Why can't it just be fine at launch? Why do I have to wait six months for it to finally be patched? Like, I guess it's just the type of gamer I am. Where if it's not working right away, I just I'm just done. Like, I'm no, I'm over it. it. Like, because yeah. I, I guess you know we grew up in a generation where games were done. And if they weren't, they got pushed back, and they came out, and this was the final product. We didn't have to wait six, seven months for the game to find, like, oh, we patched it, it's added all this, added all that. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe that it's just the type of, that's the type of gamer I am. I know everyone's different, but, you oh, know, well, I don't... That, that's the thing, right? That was the ongoing message, not just from Microsoft as per se, like for everybody in this generation like a lot of the titles that we got and received everybody had the same message right they're like hey uh sorry our game is glitchy oh we'll fix it during like the next five months and you're just like dude like then yeah. why did you release it yeah you know you know what it is you know my, myself who plays a lot of like beta and pre-release games where you know i'm used to glitches you know how xbox brought in that uh a category specifically for pre-release games uh, yeah. So I think it's something like that, you know. I'm used to all that kind of game, so I'm I'm used to encountering bugs and stuff, and you know, waiting for it to get fixed over time. Because I play all those games on PC, uh, so I'm, I think it's for me. I think I'm just used to it. Argan, I wanted to ask you, what did you think of Recore? Yeah, so Recore was pretty good. I never finished it per se, but uh, it was very Zelda esque. So that's why I really started enjoying. It. Eventually, I'm probably gonna go back to it, but um, it, it the story wasn't really there it was kind of interesting trying to find out what's happening but the gameplay was very much like zelda you're moving around even how like you circle around and attack the enemies you you know yeah. the enemy has the pattern it's not crazy hard but it's also not that you know like easy to kill like so it was like in between uh, in terms of enemies but um i definitely enjoyed it there was a lot of puzzles uh it just you know i think it got a what a seven at that at the time right was it? Yeah, it, it it wasn't. They didn't get any bad scores. It was it was right around a seven. I'm gonna throw in another uh, disappointment here. Um, you know, you brought it up earlier in the show. Uh, Halo Five. You know, I mean, oh, it wasn't list. a, you know, it wasn't a bad game per se, but the story just. I like it. You know, obviously the marketing. You know, let, let's talk about it real quick. The marketing made it seem like you were gonna make a choice: Master Chief or Spartan Lock. And they were going to have this sh battle. And it made it seem like you're going to have an option. Are you going to side with Chief? You're going to side with Locke. The game comes out. It's, I think it was what, like 85% Locke. And maybe the rest was, there was like three levels only as Master Chief. And, you know, that pissed a lot of people off. I mean, I didn't. It seem like it was like, you know, Chief was getting hunted by Locke like that. Yeah. But then, like, you know, they meet up and they're like, oh, bro, you're my pal. You're my pal. All right, well, cool. Yeah. We're cool, right? That's fine. Yeah, I'm going to let you go now. They had that one battle. They had that one battle where they fist fought. Then after that, he's like, okay, I'm on your side. And it was just, it's you like, know, I, I really hope they fix it with Infinite. Obviously, we know what's going on with Infinite. It got pushed back. 
So I really do hope that the story is much better. But again, the game was not bad. The gameplay was excellent. The multiplayer was good. It's just the, you know, I, I am, I do play Halo for story, and it just, it, it wasn't there for me. It stunk. Uh, uh, is Halo Five yeah, going to be part of our playthrough for all the Halos? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it, def- it definitely should. You know, I, you know, we're going to go through Dan and I over the next couple months. We're probably going to some streams here and there. We're going to go through the Halo story, so we're going to go through all of them. So, you know, it, it definitely should be on there because Infinite, we don't know when it's coming out. So, Dan, we have uh, plenty of time to get through the yeah. the Halo story. So, <clears throat> no rush. I'll throw a game on there. Um, I'll send you guys something fun. How about? The one game that kind of really upset me because I was hoping for a really good game uh, was uh, Crackdown. I, <laughs> that's my last one. Oh, oh my it? god, what a, what a, that's my last one. What a fucking disaster, Crackdown. Thank God for Xbox Game Pass because that game was a. I, <laughs> oh I played. Thank God. <laughs> it only took me thirty minutes, and I was like, I'm done. This game is shit. Dude, it was absolutely terrible, man. Fucking poor Terry Crews and his career. <laughs> Dude, it was um. Oh wow, that's cr- okay. Right? Yeah, that's really interesting. Oh, the, you know why, Barbosa? Because they're doing the, uh, I think what's going on right now is the awards. They're doing like these, um, I think she's part of the Twitch like awards they're doing. So that's probably like a, an early edition maybe. Gotcha. Yeah, so the, the listeners know what we're talking about. Well, I just posted a link so you know, good news, I guess. Uh, there was a streamer uh, and they saw in the background that she had a PS5 in her room, so... Who knows? Pre-orders might be closer than you know. But really quickly, with Crackdown 3, as, you know, before that uh, we talked about that PS5 thing really quick, it, uh, let's talk about this. How many times that game got pushed back? Oh, man, that was... It, uh... it, and you would think, like, a game getting pushed back that much, it's like, okay, it's going to come out, it's going to be good. Absolutely not. I think it was... I think crack obviously Crackdown One. I think Crackdown One looked better graphically than that game did, and played. I mean, it. I. I think it was the so disappointing. Was max in that game. I was like, nope, can't do it. Fucking it, uninstall. It was disappointing because you had the marketing of Terry Crews and mm-hmm. everything. He was a character in the game, and it was just like I had high hopes for a while, and I was so excited. And God, man, I could barely even get through thirty minutes. It was yeah, so it was disappointing. It was very repetitive too. Oh yeah, this is they, the thing. They, when they showed us the demo of the game and they show like these like uh, pre-render things, it looked like well, you're like, holy crap, man! This game looks insane. Look at this open world, world destructive, everything. And then when it came out, it's just like, uh, ploop. Uh, this breaks. <laughs> like I said, thank God for Game Pass, man. Because imagine we spent sixty dollars on that pile of shit. Oh my God. Didn't you do it though? Huh? Didn't didn't they buy it? No, no, we had Game Pass. We had Game Pass. Right. We had game Pass. Right. No, sure. no the, the bad game. The, the bad game. Dan spent sixty dollars on was. Uh, uh, we never let him live it down. What home the hell front. is it? Oh my, home front, home front. Home front. Yeah. yeah, I home forgot front. about that. <laughs> I remember we were playing, and Dan's like, "Ah, oh, man, I can't wait for midnight, man. Home front's coming out. Let's go." <laughs> yeah, I remember. I shut the fuck up. <laughs> But Dan, you said you had one more. You said you had uh, one more game. Yeah, I got one more game on here. And <laughs> me, personally, I'm a Tycoon fan. Uh, and I was a little upset by Zoom Tycoon. Zoom Tycoon. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, you know, I, they're, they're very popular. And so are the freaking simulator games. There's so many, like, random. Oh, there we go. We missed one. I mean, I haven't played it, but obviously Microsoft, like, Flight Simulator apparently is, like, a really good simulator game. Yeah, if, if you can run it. <laughs> oh, really? It's that's the key. That much power? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's not working for half of the people who bought it. So, oh Did my you hear the, the the memes about the thirty ninety? Like they're oh. like, oh, thirty ninety is this beast card, and then just see flight simulator coming through from the background. Dude, see so much shit with the flight simulator. Fucking hilarious. Oh my, oh my god! But all in all, now we're gonna uh, close out our Xbox One. Um, breakdown here of this whole generation what what, what what do we give xbox one and uh what are we looking forward to with series x as we close out here i mean we, uh, i'll uh... give xbox one jen uh dan you can go ahead if you want to i'll say afterwards but oh no, i was about to just and i was about to just say like uh, from watching you know xbox develop over all these years to what it is now i think it's uh 
you know, remarkable improvement. And uh, they did a lot of shitty stuff at the beginning and changed into a lot better. Uh, they did a lot of great features, like, you know, looking for groups was one of the best features they probably added on Game Pass, uh, on Xbox. Because uh, I know I used it a lot, you used it a lot, Patrick, and, you know, I think it was really good. Uh, it's too toxic now. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it was good. It was a good feature. It really it is. It is. So I think they're ending this generation strong, and especially you know with the Xbox Series X and how powerful it is now. And you know we're starting to see, hopefully, starting to see a lot more you know exclusives coming into next gen. Uh, so I'm, I think they did really well here, uh, with ending this gen out. I think you know I, I think they had a really rough start. Uh, definitely not a rough start as obviously the PS3 had when it launched, but. I think the start really hurt Xbox, and of course, coming out with the Connect 2 bundled with the freaking console, I think that really hurt, but Phil Spencer took over, it became more about games, and you know, that it started to go in an upward direction, and they really rebounded. I do think uh, we do need more first-party games. I think that should be the focus with Series X. I think we should start getting more first-party games uh, for Xbox. Um, as much as I do love Halo, I do love the Gears of War. Um, Fable now. I, I, I really, and that we're getting Fable again. I really do think we need some new IPs. You, you know, know I, and that's one thing that Phil Spencer said. He's, you know, that's his goal is to bring more first party games. You know, they, they have a really strong area in Indies. I think Xbox leads the indie yeah. industry. I mean, Cuphead, Cuphead at the time when that first came out, that was great. Um, really good IP, but now PlayStation's going to have it. So, I mean, I think they really need to start uh, getting ahead a little bit more, with get some new IPs on the Series X. Uh, but I'm also a little nervous about the Series X because, to my knowledge, this is the first console that's coming out with not one single first-party title. Yep. And... It, you know, you could you at least have to have one. I thought we were gonna have that with Halo, obviously not, but maybe even a we're well, not even getting a Forza or anything. So yeah. like, yeah, you know, I, I talked about this with you guys. I think I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna wait. I mean, like, I do want a Series X. Don't get me wrong, but at that point, I'm just paying for an upgrade. And it's almost September now, and this is um, for both companies. We don't even have a price. Yeah, this game of chicken needs to end. Yeah, no, you know, like, they, they are, that's all there is to it. They are yeah, playing chicken. I, it's, 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 it's September, and I sent you guy. I sent you that article before. We were always given at least like five months, knowing what the price. But we're realistically what less than two months knowing the and, price. And here's the thing, right? You know, I get we get it. COVID happened, all right. It just really made everything hurt and changed everything. But you know. If you are having issues and you can't release it, just delay it then. Problem yeah. solved. Uh, but yeah, like, I'm... don't play this game that you're like, hey, um, all right then. So, you know, your pre-orders, guess what? They're a week before release. Do you imagine that? Like like a phone, like an iPhone yeah. or any Android will, phone? Yeah. So, uh, it'll be insane, man. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, i got to like flush out $500 or more to get these systems <laughs> yeah. out of nowhere. But, you know, all in all, um, it definitely was a really – uh, fun generation. I had a lot of good, fun times. I mean, Xbox Live is still um, mild, uh, you know, very good with multiplayer. Most of all of our friends, you know, have a lot of good times, you know, with uh, Rainbow Six, Friday the 13th, you know, Titanfall, Call of Duty. You know, the list goes on with a lot of fun multiplayer we had. Um, of course, Game Pass, amazing. Love the feature. Uh, as Dan said, looking for group was good for a little while for me, but then it just became a little too toxic. But, you know, Great generation, uh, had a lot of fun, but again, I'm a little nervous for Series X. Uh, hey, Argonaut, man, if, if uh, yeah, so, you know Xbox um, actually does acquire WB, you'll see some more exclusives. WB is not selling anymore. ATT just said that it's too valuable of an asset to sell. They oh, just did said, they? Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. That would have been huge, though. That would have been. Oh, been, that would have been... it would have changed the whole gaming. Like, it, like yeah. the whole market would have been like boom, like a massive shift on it because you don't know like what's gonna happen. Then, like you know, they got Lord of the Rings, they got Harry Potter, Mortal, they got Mortal Kombat, Batman. they got Batman. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, going back to uh, the generation, I think Xbox had a really rocky start. Um, there are good things that came out of it. Definitely, Phil Spencer taking the helm really changed it. But I, I'm definitely we're on the same page as uh, you know Rage Quit. 
it's a simple fact that right now where we're at with all of this is that like hey you need to show us your first party games you need to like show that your lineup and your developers are working hard in this like I, look, I'm not gonna lie to you. I saw Halo Infinite and I was not impressed by it whatsoever. And and I called it. You can ask Rage Quit. I was like, hey, this game is gonna get delayed. And Rage Quit is like, there's no way the first the first title, the launch title, is gonna get quit. Like it's gonna it's gonna get delayed like that. And he's like, and it happened. It's just like it gives a weird messaging, right? Because Xbox Series X was like just massive, strong in messaging. He's like, here's our system first. Here are how it looks. Here's the specs. It's more powerful. And then you're just like, dude, man, this is looking great. I can't wait for it. And they're like, uh, there's no titles for it other than the art third party. And you're just like, wait, what? Yeah, they're, they're going to have to scratch yeah. something up. Bro. They have to do something with their launch. Their, their launch is going to fail if they don't. Yeah, I mean, it, I, but they're, they're on Game Pass and like the multiple titles you could be able to download on Game Pass. But you know, only time will tell. I mean, like I said, it, it, it's very... Uh, oh, but there... can I add one more thing? Sorry. Absolutely. I no, yeah. Remember this. Uh, there's one thing, and I'm sure Dan knows about this. It's called Xbox All Access, all right? So Xbox seems like it's doing this leasing program, right? So I think it's for 24 months, and you basically pay for the system monthly. Heard about and, that. Uh, yep. With the Ultimate Game Pass. Dude, you'd be surprised. That might, given that it doesn't, like, you know, it guarantees your game pass, so you have, like, at least 100 games right there to play right off the bat, including the first party that are going to come out throughout the years. But you can get the system at a lower rate, right? I mean, you're probably paying interest, of course. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, we paid, we do that for our cell phones, right? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like a, le- it's a, it's a basically leasing an item. And, you know, people might get it and be like, "Hey, I don't have the five hundred dollars to pay right now." Five. This is estimation, of course, right? Hopefully, yeah. it's five hundred and it's not higher than that, which some rumors say. Uh, hey, um, you can pay a monthly, and you know, if you play like thirty dollars a month for you know twenty four months, man, it's not a bad deal, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I forgot about yeah. that, but I think uh, I think you had to buy the Xbox One X or the S in order to do the upgrade later. It's yeah, no, I, well, that's for the for this is they're they're showing that uh for people that have the Xbox One X first. Oh, but yeah, it seems okay. like it's going to be available to the mass public afterwards. Because I mean, so like, that was great. I love that at all access. I thought about doing it, but I already had the X at the time. Yeah. No, I mean, I the same thing with me. Um but if that opens up like that, man, I'm telling you, you'd be surprised how many people are going to try to get all access to be like, hey, man, um, sure, uh, I'll, I'll pay $50, $40 a month for 24 months. Plus, you know, I, I already have a brand new system that way. It opens yeah. the availability to people. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it goes through Amazon financing or something. So, um, I mean, it's a great, it's a great deal. I mean, if you know, if you can't chunk up that much change, it's fantastic. Yeah. But I think that's it for the Xbox uh, portion of this podcast. Uh, let us know what you guys thought about it on our social medias. You know, you can always find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Inner Mom's Basement. You can also, once again, we also have that giveaway going on uh, for our podcast listeners at innermomsbasement.com slash giveaway. You can join that, and that's three years again, guys. This is fucking amazing. And you know what? Our podcast has been doing better and better and better each month, and we're we're so excited about that. So we just wanted to thank you guys about for that and for all the support you guys have been giving us. All right, guys, take it easy. Yeah, all right, guys. You've just listened to the In Our Mom's Basement, a video game podcast with your hosts Dan Geofue and Rage Quit Pat. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play. See you in the next episode.